When you're buying a new gaming monitor, you don't even consider 60 Hertz anymore, right? It's always 144, 240 Hertz, or 360 Hertz, or even higher. So why not do the same thing for your gaming mouse? Well, I'll tell you why. Because they still suck. This is the Razer Viper 8K. It was released back in January of 2021 as a replacement for the regular Viper. So the regular Viper doesn't exist anymore and it's basically this thing, which is to say that it's the same mouse, same everything, same design, but with an 8,000 Hertz polling rate rather than the standard 1,000 Hertz that you're used to seeing in all other gaming mice. The problem with it though is that 8,000 Hertz still doesn't work in the majority of games. And it's not just the Viper that has this problem, it's all 8,000 Hertz mice, including the Corsair Sabre RGB Pro Champion series. Now this isn't going to be a review or comparison on these two mice. If you really wanna just see that, you're gonna to wanna to watch another video because the Viper is a pretty old design at this point, so there's nothing really new to talk about. And well, I don't really use Corsair mice to know if this one's a new or old design, but regardless, this is going to focus on the current state of 8,000 Hertz polling rate for mice and why you still shouldn't focus on getting a mouse specifically for 8,000 Hertz. So there's only really one problem and that is the whole stuttering thing. It doesn't matter what game you're playing, if you try any game on your Steam, Epic, Origin Library, there's a very high chance that you're gonna be experiencing some major stuttering, some input delay, or some crazy sensitivity wackiness. It's a very weird thing to kind of experience. And I'm guessing it's because the computer or the game engine just can't handle all the information going in in one second. But yeah, let me just show you what I'm talking about. So I've tried a decent amount of games and you'd be surprised with not only how many games failed to register eight kilohertz, but also the type of games. Even esports titles seem to still not manage eight kilohertz at all. So we're gonna start with PUBG. Take a look at this delay that's happening. No matter how fast or medium I move my mouse, if I move it for long enough, you're gonna see that the screen is kind of trying to catch up, but registering it very slowly. And then when I stop moving my mouse, all that information is being fed into the game engine or to the computer or whatever, and then just catching up immediately at the last moment. Then we have a game like Rainbow Six Siege, which has a sensitivity out of whack issue where you move the mouse left or right and it doesn't have the same sensitivity all the time. Even mid swipe, it goes up and down in sensitivity, which is kind of weird. This also happens in Modern Warfare where it doesn't happen as much as Siege, but it does happen enough to the point where it's just like, you should not be using 8,000 Hertz for this game. And I assume it's gonna be the same with Warzone, Vanguard, and all the other things that are running on the same engine. So yeah, probably not the best for those kind of games. But then we get to the big issue, which is the whole stuttering thing. Basically, when you move your mouse left or right, even at a decent medium speed, the game just completely freezes while you're moving the mouse. It's, it's horrible. So we're just gonna go down the list, starting with Apex Legends. Just take a look, nothing really needs to be said here. Then you have Valheim. Then Star Citizen, which this probably also affects any other game running on the Lumberyard engine. And even though Star Citizen is a very far off kind of Frankenstein of Lumberyard, it's still Lumberyard. Then surprisingly CSGO, which, you know, an esports title, especially from a company like Valve, you'd, you'd expect 8,000 Hertz support, but nope. And then Lost Ark, which for some reason, even though you're just moving your mouse, it freezes the game completely. This isn't even an FPS game. This is a top down point and click kind of thing. So I don't know why this game freezes, but whatever, just worth noting here. The only two games that I found that didn't have any issues was Overwatch. And I don't even play that game. I was just testing it because somebody told me there wasn't an issue on that game. I did verify it, it worked totally fine, but also Valorant because they did add a raw buffer input 8,000 Hertz support option in the game to basically support 8,000 Hertz mice. And it does work flawlessly. And let me tell you, if all these other games had 8,000 Hertz support, one of these mice, even though I like wireless mice more than wired, I would probably go with these 8,000 Hertz mice because the difference versus 1,000 Hertz is noticeable. It's like going from, again, a 60 Hertz monitor to a high refresh rate monitor. It is 
really nice. All that extra information per millisecond or per second really makes the aim feel much more crisp than I already felt with something like my Super Light or my Viper Ultimate. This is really a game changer in my opinion. And it's like, I already gave out free haircuts with my G Pro X and Viper no problem, but the rate at which I do it with an 8,000 Hertz mouse, it's so much easier. Like it really is. It is definitely worth it if these games supported it. Now, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be getting these mice because if you drop the polling rate to 1000 Hertz, you can still use the mouse no problem. It's gonna work just like any other gaming mouse that you've used before. It's just, you're not gonna have that added benefit of seven times or eight times more information per second. My math sucks, so don't blame me. That extra information per second to basically just have better crisper aim. Now, before I end the video, I know some people are gonna be asking, well, what about 4000 and 2000 Hertz? If I drop it to a less frequency, will that work no problem? No. It doesn't matter if you go to 2000, you're still gonna have a little bit of a stuttering issue or delay issue in PUBG or sensitivity wackiness in, you know, Call of Duty's engines or whatever. It's just not gonna happen as often, but happening at all means that you're still going to have issues and, you know, you could possibly die instead of getting that critical kill you need versus just leaving it at 1000 Hertz. Again, if you wanna buy this mouse for just specifically Valorant, that's totally fine. And I think you'll very much enjoy it. But for anything else, it's just not gonna work until these companies update their game engines to officially support 8000 Hertz. And if you're also wondering if you just want a really crisp kind of clicking or mouse moving experience or whatever in Windows, yeah, it works totally fine in Windows. There's no stuttering on the desktop or anything else that you're normally doing. It's just in games where it cannot support the amount of information that's happening per second. So it kind of sucks because I'm excited for this after trying it in Valorant, but hopefully later this year, these companies will, or more companies will update their engines to support it because I'm really excited for this. It's kind of like super high refresh rate monitors which we still want like 480 Hertz from LG or whatever that we still don't have. But yeah, that's all I got to say about this. Don't buy an 8,000 Hertz if you're specifically looking for 8,000 Hertz, unless you're only playing it in Valorant or Overwatch, or unless you just want a future proof, go ahead. Leave it at 1,000 Hertz until games do support it. But yeah, that's it. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you disliked it, leave a dislike. If you um, want to support the channel, consider subscribing also. Leave a comment in the comments about your comments and have a great day every day. Peace.